Hey guys, hey, welcome, welcome back to Inner Stage Window um, with me and my usual co-host Landon. Say hi, Landon. Hi, Landon. I'm dancing, but you can't see it. Oh, I believe in you. I can feel the dance <laughs> through your voice. <laughs> it's a very jolly dance this morning. <laughs> oh, sweet. I love it. The weather's nice. Good news. Everything's beautiful. Like that's 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 the vibe of today, right? That's <sighs> the vibe. Yeah, I mean the weather is like mediocre here but i'm getting a peanut butter martini tonight so life's Ooh. good <laughs> oh my gosh i want a peanut butter martini that sounds delicious <laughs> come visit me in maine i'll treat you to the world's best peanut butter martini oh oh wow yeah, see? maine has a lot of things to offer guys but not good weather i mean it's beautiful well, I mean, here and you're saying it's kind of crappy it's there it's april in maine what did you expect <laughs> I don't know. I've never been there. <laughs> hey, Soda, how are you doing today? Thank you so much. We love the hat, too. Look what it does. Well, only only one side still works, but what? The you other side out so much. Yeah, the other side <laughs> broke. There's a hole in the in the air compressor thingy. Um, oh, but this no, side works. Think, okay, I'm not going to lie, though. Now that I've caught up on the on like the stream video, I think the one ear is really cute. <laughs> I think oh, it's thank like you, that Landon. Oh, what's that? It's like very cute. Oh my gosh, Lunar. Holy crap. Hi, Lunar. Another month. You have been oh you have been God. gone on seven months now. You're ridiculous. Thank you so so much. Oh, and is that a new color? You changed your color. I like that. I like that pretty violet color for you, Lunar. It's really it's really nice. <laughs> can we change our colors on Twitch? These are all the things that I'm learning. Yeah, yeah, you can go in and change your change the color of your name. That's why mine's always pink, and you'll see like yours changes because you've never set your color. So that means the Twitch picks your color at random. Oh, now I need to now I need to go do that. That's good to know. Okay, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. keeping that in mind. Yeah, <laughs> it is very daydream like. I love that. All right, so um, before without further ado, uh, Landon, what is it that we're going to be talking about today? We are going to move back into the realm of making mistakes and how to recover after you've made some mistakes. We've talked about common mistakes in role plays, but now we're talking about what are the next steps once you, that mistake has been made, what happens then? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so so we had that that'll be very interesting. Yes. So we had an episode about conflict, like regular conflict, disagreements, arguments, and we had an episode just last week about um you know abuse like straight up abusive behaviors and you know things like that so this is kind of a follow-up to those to those two too so maybe um you've been in some conflicts before i mean probably right <laughs> maybe never, after uh well we know that i mean but that's just you <laughs> Um, so then, and then we had the abuse episode last week and after watching that, you know, you might have realized that maybe you've done some of these, um, behaviors in the past and, uh, and you're realizing like, oh shoot, I have some stuff that I've messed up. So this is kind of the follow-up to those two episodes. We're going to talk about all of that stuff. If you are, have watched those episodes and realized like, oh shoot, I've made some mistakes. Now, what do I do? So <laughs> me on one monitor and rival on the other. I mean, that's that's the way, Lunar. That's the way. I see that my tracker didn't update with your resubscribe. Hang on, I'm gonna I'm gonna fix that. Uh, I'm gonna fix that real quick. But before we get started in all that lovely stuff about mistakes and how to and how to this uh, is the test. Forest, what what's your favorite thing of the of the week? Karen. My favorite thing, my favorite thing is y'all. I got my vaccine. <gasps> Vaccines. I did. I got it on Monday. Um, so I know as Thumper reminded me, I, it takes two weeks before I'm like fully whatever, whatever. Like I get it, okay. But like I'm good. Okay, so, you got, so you got the you got the uh the one shot. Yes. I got the Johnson and okay. Johnson. The single shot um be that way like it was just it was just easier you know what i mean and it's so funny because we got it on monday and then on tuesday they took it off to go research the blood clot thing so <laughs> so we Whoopsie. just barely got it <laughs> well better better getting it than not i know right <laughs> no um well it's only happened to six people and they had issued like seven million shots or something like that so it's literally like less than one in a million chance so i'm not worried about getting it they, i think they just took it off the market because like um they have to like it wasn't a listed side effect 
And like, you can't have something out there if the side effect with a side effect that's not listed, like you can't, you can't do that. So, um, yeah. We also also wanted to protect, you know, from a class action lawsuit might as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. That's kind that's kind of important. So, (laughs) so, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not nervous about any of the side effects or anything. I actually did have a really rough time of it. We got it Monday morning and then all day, all all Monday afternoon and like all day Tuesday, like I was done. I was so done. Like my arm hurt, like all the way from the shoulder down to the fingertips, like awful. Um, I had the nausea. I had the fever. I had the fatigue. Like I had all of it. It was like, it was like all my COVID symptoms that I had, except that when I had COVID, they were spread throughout the two weeks and relatively mild. It was like they crammed like a week and a half, two weeks worth of symptoms into a day and a half, like all at once. It was freaking awful. That is terrible but it's over and now you are going to be covid free it'll be a hot girl covid free summer that's right that's right (laughs) covid free hot girl summer Woo! (laughs) yeah and before i before i end my favorite thing um i want to do something else during this little my little favorite thing section so i'm actually going to pause the game real quick because we're going to do a prediction y'all we're going to do a prediction so i got to get out the game because you know how viva pinata doesn't like to do that. Okay, so I know things look a little janky, but that's so I can type in the Twitch chat. We are very, very close to getting done with this game, as you guys know. And um, there's basically three pinatas left to get. There's the Elephant and the Rorio that I'm trying to get in this garden, and then we're going to go back to the Volcano Garden and get a Dragonosh. So my question is, um, so we're kind of just sitting around and waiting for the Elephant and the Rorios to come. So my question is going to be is, will I get an... Ella Vanilla or Rorio this stream? Or are we just going to sit and watch the pinatas? Um, <laughs> and do, and, and nothing's going to happen. Okay. So I'm going to give y'all, we're going to give like the good, a good 15 minutes of submissions for this prediction. Okay. Okay. Um, I had too many characters in the question. There we go. Okay. So we're going to start the prediction. So you have 15 minutes to to do your predictions. It's for channel points. And if you get it right, then you get more channel points. It's like a little gambling betting game thing. So will we actually get a Rorio or an Elephanilla on this stream? Do your predictions. And then, you know, at the end of the stream or whenever we get one, we will uh, award those out. All right. All right. Prediction casted. Sorry? I said prediction casted. Oh, okay. Okay. So um so basically we're just waiting. We're just waiting for one of those guys to resident up. There's really nothing else to do with at the moment because we only have those guys left. Okay, so all that being said, um Landon, what was your favorite thing this week? Oh, um I got some extremely good news. Um your girl has a job. Ah! I'm um, so happy for you. <laughs> oh, like, yeah, I'm very excited. Uh, so for those of you who don't know, I am currently working uh, as a student intern because I'm going to school and teaching. Um, but the student internship, like, job that I have is basically teaching. I'm just, I am a teacher. Uh, I don't have any other adults in my room. I've been le- doing my own lesson plan. I've been teaching my own classroom since day one, but I have my I've been doing all my own lesson plans and curriculum since uh, October. So um, very, very, very exciting stuff. Um, and I have an interview for an actual full time position um, on Monday at 10 a.m. They got me a sub at everything. I did the interview, and at 4 o'clock that afternoon, they called me and offered me the job. So <gasps> I am going to be a full-blown teacher come this <gasps> fall with a pay and everything. Oh, I'm so excited for you. I'm so excited for you. So for you guys that, yes. that don't know, this year was not supposed to be like that for no. Landon. She was really just <laughs> supposed to be, like, you know, a, a teacher's assistant, like, truly a s- assistant. But, you know, then – but COVID happened. And um, that became no longer viable for the school. They needed her to be an actual teacher, even though it was a volunteer position that she wasn't getting paid for. So yeah. that sucked. But <laughs> I I know that because you did that, that's what guaranteed you this job. So this oh, past year 100%. has been crappy, but you got the reward at the end. Thank God. 
yeah, and it's been an amazing learning experience and, and, and everything like that, too. So it's just been, you know, full time. I, I took six classes in the fall and taking three classes this semester. And then on top of teaching full time, it's been a lot. So <laughs> I'm very excited to not only have a summer off, but to have a job waiting for me in August teaching uh, humanities, which is basically a combination of social studies and reading, which is what I wanted to re teach more than anything anyway. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. it's awesome. I'm very, very, very happy. It's very good news. It's very, uh, it's my favorite thing of this week. I am so happy for you. I really am. Like, not only did you get the position, but it was like the position that you wanted. Yeah. You don't um, have to teach STEM anymore. <laughs> oh my God. Thank God. It was very funny during the interview because, so it's a middle school position. So I'm, I basically qualified to teach any subject in middle school. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so they were very much like, well, which, which subject would you rather, would you most like to teach? And I was like, I can teach any of them. And then at the end, they were like, okay, for real, if you had to pick a subject not to teach. And I was like, listen, I, I have been through a trial by fire. I can teach anything uh, that you need me to teach. I will approach it with enthusiasm. However, please don't give me the seventh grade science position. <laughs> <laughs> And because and you've done such amazing work, they were able to honor that. <laughs> yeah, they appreciated my honesty. And I was like, because I'm like, there is someone better suited for that job. Fifth grade science is about my limit as far as scientific theory goes. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just like anything beyond this. I'm just like, I let's go back to the fun stuff like planets. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, remember when you first got this position and they put you in STEM and you were like, I can't do this. I can't do this. And I'm like, yeah, you can, girl. Yeah, you can. <laughs> Yeah, you're gonna figure out real quick that it really did that teaching that majority of the job of teaching is not knowing things like that's not the that's job true. <laughs> that's true no um no there i mean there was a point around simple machines that i was just like i don't know guys <laughs> we have a yep. whole unit on simple machines and i don't know let's research it <laughs> yeah so you don't always know wonderful fifth grade teacher that I am. Um, very happy to not be teaching fifth grade science anymore. I'm so glad. I'm so glad you're well, going to get to do humanities. Some... Yes, I'm so excited. Like things like Greek gods and all the other, that's the unit I'm most excited for if you couldn't tell, but also just like, just being able to, my school is very, very uh, open with diversity and, and in, we have an entire like committee that is really focused on pushing diverse voices open like diverse voices forward so being able to like read diverse stories and make mm. my kids read diverse stories about whether it be lgbtq or or people of colors uh and then being able to actually study those sorts of movements would be awesome oh, uh, and i can that. make a curriculum that involves all that so i'm like yeah let's do it <laughs> It's so funny you said like Greek gods and stuff because um, my one of my elementary schools, the third, fourth, and fifth grade elementary school, um, that was what our gifted program was the year that I was in fifth grade was uh, was Greek and Roman gods and um, and I, I remember it very fondly because we had an Olympics at the end. <laughs> I love and that. It was so fun. I didn't win anything because I'm not very athletic, but it was amazing. Um, yeah, no, you bet your ass that I will personally be making everyone um, read a Greek god myth and then have to do a skit of it. I love that. You bet that. your ass that I'm doing that. <laughs> I love it. I mean, that sounds amazing. Like, it was I mean, literally my favorite. Like, it was my favorite lesson in that year. Yeah, no, it's, it, it was, it was, I was in middle school, so it wasn't in fifth grade. I think I was in sixth or seventh grade when we did that, too, where it was, you know, the study of, of, roman and greek mythology and then mm -hmm. had to do a skit and it was my highlight the performance was my highlight we invited parents it was great yeah <laughs> we invited parents got invited to our olympics thing too <laughs> that's so cool that's so cool so happy happy things all right predictions still going so you guys can cheat whoever voted yes you you got it and if everybody else if you haven't voted yet the answer is yes i didn't think it would happen this fast Go cheat. Have fun. I voted yes. <laughs> that was me. <laughs> <laughs>
But if you haven't done a prediction yet, you know the answer and the prediction's still running. So you can go get, go get channel points. <laughs> I'll mark it yes at the end of the stream. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> um, yeah. So that's favorite things. Also, that was a really cute uh, pinata. The Rorio? Yeah, I love the yeah. mane. The rainbow mane is really cute. It's, it's a gay lion. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Alright, shall we move into the subject? Yes, yes. Okay, how do we want to get started? Well, I think that we should go down the steps of, of what happens after you've made a mistake. So, the kinds of mistakes that we're referring to are mistakes against people, mm -hmm. um, mistakes in an RP, like if you break one of the rules, uh, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, so what's the first thing that you have to do when you realize that a mistake has been made on, and you are responsible for that mistake? Okay, so the very first thing that you need to do when you realize you've made some kind of mistake, and as Landon said, that could be like, you know, breaking a rule in, in the roleplay group you've joined, that could be some kind of interpersonal dispute where you're in the wrong um, between like you and a friend, um, just anything like that that can happen within the context of, um, of online role play. That's really what we're talking about. So um, the first thing that you need to do is accept that, um, that you've made a mistake. And without this step, I really feel like a lot of the other advice that we're gonna give today is kind of irrelevant. So when I say like you have to accept that you made a mistake, like that is the, you know, do not pass go, do not collect $200 step. If you've not accepted it yet, then I don't think you should do anything because, um, well, I'll just kind of, I'll just kind of say this. I'm so tired of seeing like fake apologies on the internet. That's really where that comes from. Um, they're, they don't do anything. They're disingenuine. They make people not trust you. Like they're just silly. Stop doing them. So step one, before you do anything else is accept that you made a mistake. And, um, and yeah, so, so I know there's a lot that we want to add to that, but that is the, the basic first step yeah i think that what you said is important that we see apologies all the time and we as people have probably received apologies where you can tell that the person has not accepted that either what they did was wrong or that they've made a mistake or anything like that or they're still trying to like prove their point of yeah i did that thing and but this 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 like yeah like they don't see it as a mistake so you know yeah. to them it's just like a thing that happened that people are mad about you know, and, and, and that's and that's that's valid too. Like that happens. Sometimes people are mad at you and you didn't make a mistake, you know, but <laughs> sometimes people are mad at you because you made a mistake. It just depends on the situation. Um, but if you are if you are truly trying to, to move forward past something, then you have to accept your responsibility in the situation. Mm -hmm. Um and that means that accepting the fact that you might have made a mistake. Yep. Or that someone else might have felt that you made a mistake. Yep. Um, For sure. And if you do not do that step, then everything else is irrelevant. Mm -hmm. Right? If you do not accept that you make a mistake, you don't pass go, you don't collect $200, as Karen said in our wonderful notes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, before we, we move forward with that, though, Ty has a, a question about um, what about situations where you've gathered you've done something wrong, but you have no idea what you did? So I, I do have some advice for that. It is not on you to figure out some secret feeling or resentment someone harbors against you and they're not telling you. You know, you can ask, but I don't agree with the idea that you're just supposed to magically know that you've hurt someone or that you've done something offensive without people telling you. So Ty, my advice there is like, you know, if it's happening to you over and over, then it's probably worth asking the person that's mad at you and see if they'll tell you. They might or they might not, you know. Um, but uh, but if it's like just one-off situations, like, I'm sorry, that's on the other person. Like they 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 have to make it clear what happened. You know, you're it's 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 not on you to figure that out every single time. You know, and I say this I say this for listeners. I say this with knowing um, you know Ty pretty well and and where she's coming from with this particular question. Yeah, and I, I mean, maybe to make it more broad, because I don't know where Ty is coming from, um, to make it a little bit more broad, there, I don't think that there is any harm in asking at any point in time. 
Yeah. Um, and if you feel that you, if someone is suddenly treating you differently or is cold to you or, or, or is giving off signals and signs that you, that they are upset at you, then the, there is no harm in asking mm -hmm. once. There is no harm in asking once. And if that person then chooses not to communicate what it is that they are feeling about it, the situation, then that's no longer on you. Mm -hmm. They, mm -hmm. it is on them to then communicate. And if they aren't good communicators or they are not communicating, then that is also not your mistake. That is yeah. on yeah. them. They get to... They get to have those feelings and communicate them with when they want to. And you get to accept whether you want to be treated as such as far as, like, getting the cold shoulder and all that. Yep, for sure, for sure. I mean, sometimes, like, I'll be real. Some There are definitely times where someone is messed up and I am hurt and I decide, like, it is not worth telling them. Not because they, they, don't, they don't need to know necessarily or that my feelings weren't hurt or whatever, whatever. Sometimes it's literally not worth it. Sometimes I'm being a petty bitch and it's just, like, they don't need to know that I'm being a petty pit, bitch, you know? And I'll get over it. I just need some time. <laughs> so sometimes it's, like, as simple as that, you know what I mean? From, from the perspective of maybe the hurt person, just as an example. Um, and I agree with what Nikki says. Yeah, let's not play the guessing, the game of guessing of what you did wrong. It's arguably really manipulative. Mm -hmm. They either want resolution or they want something to hold over you. Absolutely. Um, we have talked about on this on this particular stream, like not today's stream, but in Enter Stage Window in general. And also Karen talks about so much in her videos, Spare Room, that um, communication is key in any sort of relationship. So including RP relationships that you need to be able to communicate. And if you are not giving that information, but you are still expecting your partner or, or person that you're writing with to like jump through ho hoops to figure out your own mental situation, that is not, that is not it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. That's not yep. a game we like to see. <laughs> Yeah, um, people aren't people aren't psychic, and and you know we got to stop expecting people to be psychic, especially online where you're missing like all of the body language cues and everything. Like, you know, we're missing so much information. Yet, even more so, people are expected to be psychic. Like, that's just dumb. You know, that's just dumb. Like, if I have an issue with you and I and I decide not to tell you, that is not on you. That is on me. I have done that. You know, you don't have to play guess why Karen's mad at me. You know, that's just, that's silly. And if I expected that of you, I would be being really silly. And I know it's, it's a hard balance sometimes because sometimes people, like, require time to process things. Mm -hmm. um, which is where, the depending on what your relationship is. Is this someone who continuously gets frustrated and then does gives you the silent treatment or is this just a situation where someone is acting differently um being able to to recognize that and make that own decision as to what you will what your boundaries are and what you're willing to give to the other person and how you're willing to let them treat you is an important thing to decide at that point yeah. um because some people do take a lot longer to process things like hurt or frustration or try to like maybe they're having a bad day and they realize they're having a bad day and they don't want to take out their hurt and frustration on you. So they, you know, they go silent or whatever. And that's taken, yeah. I mean, they are hurt at you, but it's overblown because they're having an emotional day. Like, you never know these things. Um, so being able to sometimes, like, give grace and give space is, is something that I do suggest if people aren't communicating with you why they're upset at you. Mm -hmm. But if it's a continuous thing, then you have to take that into consideration as far as the relationship and what your boundaries are. Yeah, and that's going to vary relationship to relationship. You Absolutely. Know? Like, and, and it's not even, your boundaries will be fluid depending on the relationship. Not just because yeah. you're like, no, I will never accept this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. For sure. For sure. That was a really good question. Um, I like that as a, as a beginning thing. Thank you so much, Ty. Uh, Nikki says, as a jump off from the guess what you did wrong game, there's the, it's not my job to explain my feelings to you. Which can be correct, but none of us are psychic novel concept. Um, I, yes. I mean, it matters the context in which that's being used. Um, it's not my job to explain my feelings to you. It, it is their job to explain their feelings to you if they <laughs> want, if they want your, if they want your behavior to change. Or if they are mm -hmm. asking for resolution to something, it is their responsibility to uh, explain their feelings to you. If they are not 
requiring that if they want to cut something off or break up or X, Y, Z, or not want to do something from then on out, um, it isn't their job to explain it to you. So it really is like, that's a, that's a fluid thing. That's kind of situational, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That one's tough. Don't see it that way. <laughs> <laughs> and people yeah. definitely use that in unhealthy ways too, where it's like, well, it's not my job to explain it to you. Well, it sometimes is, it yeah. is, sometimes it is. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. I kind of, I reject that for the most part because I don't know. Sometimes it kind of is because I'm not psychic sorry <laughs> yeah so, yeah i mean and it all it all goes back into like any time that you are going to cut communication off at the legs that means you're not leaving room for growth yeah so, yeah and, um, and you know i'm not a fan of that because it's the same the same reason that you know i don't think ghosting is bad but i don't think you should do it because it makes you a worse communicator if you practice if you ghost too often you know it's, it's the same concept <clears throat> yeah exactly um, so that's the, that's the tea on that. Yep. Um, as far as that situation. Yeah. Um. So do we want to go back to, um, accepting then? Yes. So, okay. uh, I think the first important thing is like in this kind of train, this kind of like overlaps with this is that if someone is hurt by you or your actions and you disagree with them, then this ep uh, the this is not the episode for the you. Like this is yeah. not what we're trying to talk about. We're talking about when you've made a mistake and you recognize you've made a mistake and you're willing to do that acceptance part. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're willing to put in that work. That's what we're really trying to to hit here. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the and the people that we're trying to be like here's what to do with. <laughs> yep. I mean, because sometimes, um, sometimes you have a, a feeling, and um, and you're you know feeling a little bit too much, and the other what the other person did isn't actually that bad, you know. So it, we're not talking about yeah. I mean, we're not talking about like your friend got mad at you over something that was like so irrelevant and petty, and they really shouldn't have even gotten mad. Like that's that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about like you have screwed up in some way, and you're like, oh shoot, I screwed up. What do I do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we're also not talking about like someone who thinks that oh, the rules are wrong. Then, like yeah. I didn't make a mistake. I did the thing that I think makes the most sense, and just because it doesn't align with the rules, like I still think I'm right. Because there certainly are those people in in our peak circles. Oh yeah. Um, and that's that unwillingness to sit there and say no, I didn't follow the rules, and the rules are the law <laughs> of the land, whether I like them or not is not acceptance no um, your acceptance comes with a but or an or or anything but an and you're this is not the episode for you because you're not accepting the situation yep yep like i'm sorry if their rules are stupid uh, yeah. this isn't role play groups are not governments you know you are welcome <laughs> to leave at any point they that you want to <laughs> what the rules are and you if you're gonna play in their private club have to follow them yeah um if, if you don't <laughs> then they are well within their right to sit there and say that you made a mistake yeah if they want to and and if you're not willing to accept that, then this is not the episode for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's um, that's a whole other topic for another day. <laughs> All right. So, um, first thing, you've done something wrong, and you don't understand. And this kind of again goes back into that, like, asking people why they're upset. Mm -hmm. Um, but if you've done something wrong and you don't understand what it is that you've done wrong, then please communicate. Yeah. Ask questions. You don't have to push people for answers. Um, especially if they feel, especially if it's like a situation where if it's two people involved and someone's, if, okay, let me come up with a, if you God mod somebody's character on accident. Mm -hmm. uh, and the mods have to get involved and you are issued a warning strike. Um, you don't have to necessarily go to the person who you God modded, the person who is, has the issue with you. Um, times like that, that's when you should go to the, the team or the mod team or the people who are issuing the consequence of the action. Mm -hmm. um, 
because they'll better explain it to you than the hurt person the hurt party. sometimes yeah a lot of times like the person that's actually hurt is not in a place to answer your questions and and i know that yep. sucks and we touched on this a little bit during the um abuse episode where a lot of times you know the the when in that situation like the victim is not the best person always to uh help the abuser with fixing their behavior and not doing it again um, but it, it can be like that for interpersonal conflicts, too, where whoever's feelings were hurt isn't always the best person to explain what happened. And, um, you know, when you have a role play group, one of the benefits of it is you have mods that can help you with understanding those things. So if you're in that situation where you have someone that you can go to, like a third friend that might be able to provide some perspective or a mod team and a role play group, like those are great people to ask questions to if you're not able to get the information that you're looking for from the person that you had the disagreement with. Um, now, I do think I do think that uh, if it's if appropriate, it's great to go to the person that you had the issue with that you that you wronged, like. You know, that's the person that you're trying to make amends with, right? So if you can, that's the person to go to. However, that's not always what can happen. So if you have other outlets, like use them, you know, don't forget that those exist. Yeah, and I think it's also situational because, um, at least in my opinion, it is... It is not on... It is not on the responsibility of the person that is hurt in the situation to make you accept the situation or, or for you to understand the situation. Mm -hmm. um, and that's at least my own opinion. That might be a spicy opinion. I definitely do think that communication with the other person is necessary during these steps, but I think that comes more in the apology step than it necessarily becomes the acceptance step. Um, unless yeah. there is other option and it and it uh, again it's situational and determined and it determines like because of course if it's a one-on-one -on -one and you've hurt someone's feelings or something has happened then of course there's no one else to go to you do go to them and you ask your questions but um again it's that it's that idea of sometimes the victim isn't the person to be having those conversations with yeah, um sometimes they're in they're, their feelings and it's really hard yeah you know? and, and they're going to be even more in their feelings especially if you continue to not understand um, and you don't want to then get defensive for not understanding because your not understanding is completely valid. <laughs> yeah, if you still don't under, if you're trying, if you accept that you did something wrong and you just don't get it yet, like that's, that's like a part of it, you know? Because for most of us, we're not trying to hurt other people. We're not trying to cause conflicts. So I think most of the time when people do shitty things and hurt other people's feelings, it's not like they did it on purpose, you know? <laughs> if they knew it was going to hurt the person's feelings, they probably wouldn't have done it. <laughs> Exactly. Um, and oops, sorry. Yeah, so they, they probably wouldn't have done it. And if you are just continuing to be like, but I don't understand, or what did I do different, or almost like asking questions to learn and to gather more information so you can do these steps, it might frustrate the other person and the other person might not feel like you're apologizing. Like it can, or not apologizing, might not be coming through those acceptance steps. Mm -hmm. um, so it can come across, it, you just have to be delicate with it. Um, mm -hmm. And it, it's, it, again, it goes back to what is your relationship with this person? What is the situation? Like, it is all so gray because there are so many different options and context is so important. But I think really making sure that you are, you are taking acceptance and steps to improve your behavior and explaining that will also go a long way. Yeah. Yeah, um, for sure. Nikki asked a question. Question: Ask open-ended questions and make sure your intention cl is cl uh, has clarity and not accusatory. Yep. Yeah. Stuff like, okay, so you think that I know because that is condescending and it reads like you're making it their fault rather than genuinely trying to understand, and move forward. Absolutely. So yeah, phrasing your phrasing your questions specifically to try to learn rather than trying to like point it out that it's a you them. Yep. Um, I statements are a huge thing. Like, I I I don't understand what it is that I did in uh, that I did to upset you. Can you please explain it to me? Um, is a great thing because you're talking about I. I don't understand. I'm not clear. I'm not clear. All of these things. Keep it to I statements so that you can then have have this be a learning experience rather than a oh well you got upset that I did this thing. 
Yeah, because that's not what it's about. Like, if you're really trying to seek clarity, like, that's, it really should be about, like, I don't get it. Like, it's not that, it's, it's, it's not anything past that, you know? So I statements, I think, are a great trick to try to not be condescending. And it, and I just want to acknowledge, it's very hard online through text. Yes. When someone's upset at you or when you're upset at someone to not read what they're saying as condescending, whether it is or is not. So just something to keep in mind. It, it's harder. It's harder. So, you know, if you have somebody that um, that you know well enough or that you have the type of relationship where you can get on the phone and do some of these conversations over the phone, you know, or voice chat or something like that, that is going to help as well because then they'll be able to hear your tone in what you're saying and it's going to be less likely that they're going to jump to assuming that you're being condescending um yes. so if you can if you can that's not this is a very online hobby so that's not always appropriate but <laughs> <laughs> if you can do that get on a voice chat or something i i do recommend it especially if you feel like there's misunderstanding there and you don't really know necessarily what it is you did wrong or you don't understand why what you did was was hurtful or stuff like that yeah and i also think um if you can step outside of yourself and read your and reread your messages, don't just like when you're doing this, don't just like type and then click send, like really send thoughtful messages that are purposeful. Um, reread your messages and try to think, how would you read this? You know, have it go through an e-reader so that there's no tone attached to it because we all read with tone in our head. Mm -hmm. Um, and that way you can hear what the words sound like without the intended tone behind it. And you can add tonal words to it. There are words that you can add that will add tone um, that that might be able to like make that text RPing better. But that is more steps and it might take a little longer, um, but it is it really does help. Yeah, I think it's worth it. I think it's very much worth it, though. Absolutely. Oh, yep. Yep. Um, oh, yeah. Nikki saying um, had a writing partner that had a huge falling out because of a text barrier. So now they have a BC date. Yeah, absolutely. There's just certain things that like they're just communicated better through voice. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, we all, and we've all made those mistakes. Hell, I mean, I mean, mistake very similar to this like last week <laughs> um, where I read something with a tone because I was in my fields and I read it with a tone that wasn't expected to be there. And it's like, oh, doing this via text is hard. Yeah. Um, it is not easy. So yes, do that work. Make sure that things are purposeful. Make sure that you know the tone that is behind them. Um, or like, or that you're not relying on somebody else assuming the tone. Yeah. Yeah. Voice helps a lot with that. Yes, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> but sometimes so one voice of... is difficult. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Um, one other thing that I want to say with this is if... It... When you go into these conversations, if you're saying, like, I don't understand as, like, a, a defense of, you know, I don't understand, and what I mean by that is that I didn't do anything wrong, then we're going to direct you back to that first step. Like, the first thing that you have to do in these situations is accept that some mistake happened. Now, that is to say... Um, you can, without realizing or without knowing yet what you did wrong, you can at least acknowledge like, okay, clearly I did something that hurt the person's feelings. I don't understand enough yet to know if those hurt feelings are valid or not, but clearly I hurt their feelings. Like you can at least to know that. So um, when you're going into these conversations, it can be very, very easy to just jump on the defensive and be like, oh, I didn't do anything wrong, you're upset for no reason, and then that totally defeats the purpose because maybe that's true, but maybe it's not. Like, maybe you really did do something wrong, and if you're immediately defensive, now you've made it extra hard for someone to explain to you what it is that you did wrong and why the person is hurt. Exactly. Yeah, and I think that um, it's also a difficult trap to trick ourselves into that we might think that we're approaching a situation Um not on the defense and ready to defend ourselves because we think like some of us might think that oh yeah no i i accept this but not actually really accept it um because sometimes that acceptance piece is hard and you want to have a conversation that you're not even realizing that you're defending your actions or choices in mm -hmm. um so being able to like really reflect and again be purposeful of why it is you're asking these questions and what is your motives 
Mm -hmm. um, if it's to understand to find a mistake or you think that that might be a possibility, then you truly haven't accepted it yet. Yeah. Yep. So just when you go into these conversations, make sure that you're seeking to understand and you're not seeking to defend. Now, once you get it, once you get that understanding, you know, do do what you will, right? <laughs> uh, but you. <laughs> you have to get that understanding first. Um, <clears throat> and again, I really encourage the use of a mod team if you have one available, uh, mm -hmm. third party or anything like that. If you have it available, because sometimes that helps um, mitigate the situation. It helps really take the tone out of it it helps put people in their places a little bit it helps from things getting out of hand because there is this biased third party person there mm -hmm. yeah um and that third party person isn't gonna they're not gonna have like strong feelings about it or they, they shouldn't right um they're gonna feel they're gonna feel much more neutral yes and it's like oh this person that wasn't even involved in the argument thinks this this and this about the argument like it's just easier to hear than hearing it from the other person that you had the argument with Exactly. Uh, any other um, thoughts or comments on not understanding? Like, if no. you've done something wrong and you don't understand what it is you've done wrong. No, I think that's I think that's good for that particular situation. All right. Then the next one is you've done something wrong and now you're embarrassed. Oh no. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this never happens. What? <laughs> Never, where you're like, wake up the next morning and you're like, oh, totally ripped that person's head off and they didn't deserve that. Yeah, and it's like, <laughs> my reaction was disproportionate. Uh-oh. Or I misinterpreted a situation and I realized that I'm the fucking asshole. Yep. Um, <laughs> um, Oops. How do you, yeah, how do you, how do you move on from there? What do you do? Um, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so what's our first steps? So that one's really, that one's really tough. Um, oh, Nikki has an answer. Step one, dig a hole. Step two, crawl in the hole. Step three, never leave. <laughs> exactly, Nikki. That's what we do. Uh, Every time, it's worse. You forgot to bury yourself, Nikki. That's step, step, step three. <laughs> step four is to never leave. You live in the hole now. You're a mole person. That's right. I mean, that's exactly. Okay, episode over. We're done. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's exactly. That's the healthy way to deal with conflict. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, so you've you've done you've done a shitty thing, and now you're like, oh shoot, I'm really embarrassed. I did the thing. That's not representative of me. Ah, right. This is what's happening in your head. Um, yeah. in, or in, in this scenario, out loud while you're talking. <laughs> um. So the main thing that I that I really wanted to um point out here is that. This is one of those like things where I think some people get upset with me, but not all feelings are valid. And this is one of those times where I think that that really kind of comes into play because like you can be embarrassed, but you don't get to like do different because you're embarrassed. Like you still have to do all the reconciliation. You still have to do that work. Like it doesn't matter. It, you know, I mean, it, it does, but it doesn't matter. Like you have, you have to. You have to do it anyway. Like, you have to go make amends anyway, even if you're embarrassed. It makes no difference. And and I guess we don't have to, we don't have to uh, argue necessarily about the validity of, of feelings. Like, I think that embarrassment is valid. You are allowed to feel embarrassed. Oh, it for sure. Stop you. Which is what, when you say that, like, feelings are valid, it's that you're allowed to have that feeling. Like, that is valid. You might be embarrassed. You still need to do things, whether, <laughs> irregardless if you're embarrassed or not. There is still things that need to be done regardless of that of that feeling yeah uh, your actions your actions shouldn't change your actions should not change based yeah. on that feeling absolutely um and and you might and it might suck and it might make it harder to do some of those feelings or just to do some of those actions uh but at the end of the day you messed up and you need to mm -hmm. accept that uh and and part of that embarrassment might be like wanting to just like crawl off and die in a hole but um but that's not how relation like that's not how you overcome things in relationships, right? Yep. It's not. Uh, and this this is this one particularly is very very hard for me because I I definitely have ha been in situations where I'm like, wow, I am I'm the fucking asshole. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> turns out that um this thing that that came across or that I thought was condescending wasn't at all. 
<laughs> and now I'm the asshole who's just accused someone of being a bitch to me when they haven't been. Yeah, and they're um, like, they're like, girl, I was just eating my noodles. What are you talking about? <laughs> and I just full on came at them. Not that I've ever done that at all to everybody <laughs> in my life at some point or another. Oh my um, gosh. And it's so much easier even on the internet to do where we don't have the tone oh, yeah. and we can make those assumptions, you know? And you, and you need to like, sometimes you need to sit there and just be like, ooh, ow. Um, but then like, you need to own it. You need to own that you're like, oh, actually, yeah, no, I did that thing. I made that assumption. Um, I, I'm struggling with this and I can want to go live in a hole and die. Uh, but living in a hole and dying doesn't fix a what I'm feeling because now I'm just in a fucking hole, constantly reminded by the things <laughs> they did. Or it doesn't fix their feelings because they never get anything in response other than me going into a hole and dying. Like yep. they never get an apology <laughs> for me calling them a condescending person or something like that. Like it is that like oh fuck. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. movement it is your the it is on your shoulders at this point in time if you are embarrassed to sit there and be like this sucks i am embarrassed i need to get over it or i need yeah. to move on or i need to push forward yeah i think it's like you know it's like a you gotta just take a deep breath and let the feelings do their feelings things that they like to do and go do the work that you need to do on, you know, whatever that is, the apology or the not doing it again, or the, you know, whatever it is that you're going to do in about the situation. Like you kind of just have to like, you know, deep breath. Okay. I'm super embarrassed, but I'm going to go fix this situation anyway. Yeah. Uh, Nikki, to comment on what you were saying, as far as like you, you become a mole person and marry a mole person and, and has mole children. I'm so happy for you as far as that. I crawl into the hole and die because I've probably embarrassed myself in front of the mole people anyway. And so I just have to keep <laughs> making new holes. And it's just better if I just lay down and not do anything. <laughs> <laughs> even the mole people are not safe. <laughs> yeah, even, yeah, yeah, even then I avoid embarrassment like the plague. Um, <laughs> but no, it oh is that, it is that very much like, yeah, no, you need to accept it, take a breath, and also recognize that we've all, there is not a single person who doesn't have an embarrassing memory. Um, yeah, especially when you wake up at 2, 2 a.m., you have to go pee, you lay back down, you think you're going to go to sleep. Nope, just kidding. Embarrassing memory from like your teenage years. Here you go. Have fun. <laughs> in the middle of the night going, God, I want to die. Just because I <laughs> something that is so embarrassing. But also, like, the thing that other, that other, on top of that is embarrassment is a very personal um, feeling. Most of the time, people don't know, unless you are, like, a big blusher, people don't know that you're feeling embarrassed or uncomfortable. Yeah, not really. Um, which means that it doesn't even register for a lot of people that your behavior or something that you've done is embarrassing. Um, like, unless you're making a fool of yourself, like, at a cafeteria, which is, like, I'm thinking of, like, secondhand embarrassment movie style. Like, that's embarrassing. That makes other people feel uncomfortable by your behavior. But, uh, like, as far as, like, you feeling uncomfortable with your own behavior, most people don't necessarily recognize that as a feeling that other people are feeling. Yeah. So, people I they talk to... have no to, idea. Yeah, people I talk to could 100% be embarrassed about how they talk to me at some point. But I don't know that. I don't hear that. I don't feel that. But what I do feel is them making the effort to then, you know, fix the situation. Mm -hmm. So, like, your embarrassment is very private and your own. And no one will know that this is an embarrassing moment or that you feel embarrassment about this. Yeah. If you just own your shit and move on, like, it won't even be an embarrassing moment anymore. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Yeah, because I think, Nikki, that the point of that kind of last um, thing that you said is, you know, if you approach people as human, they're basically they're basically going to be fine. Like that, that's basically my experience, too, you know, because everyone everyone fucks up sometimes like nobody oh, yeah. is immune. <laughs> We've all been in these situations where it's like, oh, right. Yeah, no, I'm I'm the asshole or or just even being like, oh, yeah, no, I said a stupid thing and it's fine mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um and don't get me wrong i know that especially on the internet the internet is full of people who just have even more anxiety than the average human being 
Um, <laughs> it can make that embarrassing factor even it can like it can make it explode even more, right? Because yeah. embarrassment is a very similar emotion to anxiety, and then that can just trigger all our anxiety responses and blah 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 blah. Yeah. Um, but recognizing that it's like okay, that's still your own personal stuff. If you wronged someone else, then you need to you need to get over it. You need to put that aside. Yeah. Exactly. For sure. <clears throat> the embarrassment doesn't change what you do. You don't get to use that as an excuse for not taking the ac next actions. Yeah. It doesn't get you out of acceptance. You have yeah. to accept that, nope, I own my embarrassment. I messed up. Let's try again. <laughs> yep. <clears throat> Yeah, uh, sure. So I guess that, that kind of leads into our next part is, you know you've messed up. How do you own up to that? Uh, so How do we've you been... read it to this acceptance point? How do you mm -hmm. do that? So we've been kind of dancing around this and, and using the word over and over, but we haven't really talked about it specifically. So I just want to talk now about apologies. Apologies. So... <laughs> When you have messed up in an interpersonal sense or in a small group sense, okay, and that's what we're talking about. I'm not talking about like you incited a Twitter mob, okay? I'm talking about like you pissed off one person or you did something wrong in your role play group. Like that's the level that I'm talking about, right? <laughs> for the most part, that is where, that's where most people are at. Yeah. Like, I, I don't really know anyone who's incited a, a Twitter mob. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, most uh, most of us do not. Most of us in the role play community, we're a niche of a niche. You know, we're not uh, we're not out here with thousands and thousands of followers where we can actually, you know, have that happen to us. Not really. Yeah. Um, at so least I not in that, that way. Exactly. If we're talking on big scale things, that's a whole other episode. And oh not yeah, one that's that a whole I other thing. Donna is an expert, so one that I mm. probably won't ever talk about. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's a whole other thing. So so okay, so the apologize. And um, this is kind of step one, and it's just because it's a gateway step, right? Like it, it opens up the communication between you and that person that is hurt by you um, to start to make amends and to start to feel better, right? It's not, it's not the end step, okay? It's not like the last thing to do. Um, and it, it doesn't even, it's not even like, you know, it's not even like the thing that will fix it, but it's the start, right? Like it's, it's the, it's the hello of the, I've messed up, right? You still have to go into the conversation of like, Hey, what's up? You know, it's that step. So that's, that's the very first thing that you got to do. You, you got, you got to apologize. So <clears throat> we have a question here. Who deserves and an apology? So Landon, do you have an opinion on that before I jump in? with um, my take on deserving and not deserving of apologies? I mean, okay. I also recognize that I'm a person who gives apologies out like they're free stickers. I am the kind <laughs> of person who walks down the street and says, I'm sorry. So like apologizing to me in the terms of owning when I feel that I have done something wrong is not uncommon. So I have the perspective that everybody who I have had been in conflict with, that I have, that my actions have been a result of like them being hurt deserves an apology. Um, that is my perspective. I also recognize that that might not be A, the most healthy perspective or B, the most common perspective. <laughs> Ty, no, she's not Canadian, but she does live in Maine, which might as well be. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also a woman. I'm also a woman who grew up in a um, upper middle class household who who was taught that taking up space is not a good thing. So like that is that is where I come from as far as like in general. So that's just kind of the mindset behind everything, which is uh, tragic. I know. That's very sad. It's very <laughs> sad. We don't we dis dislike dislike. Okay. So I definitely um, and am not of the same opinion as Landon exactly. <laughs> <laughs> as far as like giving out I said that <laughs> yeah giving out apologies like candy like I I don't think that everyone and their mother deserves an apology for every little wrong thing um I'll talk more about that later because we've got like a when when you shouldn't apologize actually section <laughs> spoilers it's coming but who deserves an apology whatever whatever situation you've already accepted at this point that you've screwed up right so that's that's the that's the umbrella that we're under whoever you screwed up to 
deserves an apology, right? Like the person that actually has the hurt feelings, that's who deserves an apology, okay? Um, if you have, if you have screwed up in like a group context, in like a RP group, maybe the mods deserve an apology. However, I think it's rare that the entire RP deserves an apology. Oh, yeah. Sorry, because... I guess maybe I wasn't looking at it through that perspective. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Because, like, this is what happens. Whenever somebody screws up so much that they feel the need to apologize to the whole RP and then they do it, oh, yeah, what ends up good. happening is just everyone just kisses their butt for, like, ten minutes. And it doesn't actually yeah. help anything. And it just puts them in this, like, weird, like, victim centralization. It just... it. It doesn't ever accomplish what they think it's accomplishing. You know what I mean? So I think apologies should typically be personal and individual and small scale. And again, I'm not talking about like when people inside a Twitter mob, right? And you you don't, the only way you can do an apology in those situations is like a mass apology, right? And I think I'm also a little bit jaded because I've been watching YouTube since YouTube started. And I have seen a gajillion, you know, YouTuber apology videos. And I'm not going to lie, they've made me kind of like, you know, <laughs> be a little bit eh, when I see a mass apology. So that's that's like my baggage, right? But considering how the internet is and how it's been going for the past several years, I don't think I'm the only one with that kind of baggage. So. <laughs> oh, you uh, There's memes about it. <laughs> yeah. So like, um, you know, that's how I feel. And so who deserves an apology? Basically, when you're trying to determine who actually deserves an apology, what you should be asking yourself is who actually has a damaged relationship with me that I need to do that step to get it started being repaired. And that's who deserves an apology, right? I definitely, no, I definitely agree with that. I was more looking like when I, when I thought of that question, I was more looking as far as like the grand scheme of apology like there are some people who sit there and go well my mistake was so minor that an apology isn't necessary oh no no no! i don't like think that. that no and that's what i was referring to as far as that that i'm like no if someone has felt hurt by my actions i will apologize even if i do not agree with even if i don't agree with the result or something like that like even if i'm not willing to take all of these steps i will apologize at the very least if that person was hurt by something that i have done well, yeah, because um, well, am... even if you don't, even if you're like in, in the in the situation of like, well, those feelings weren't valid. But if you're like, okay, well, maybe they're just dis they're disproportionately upset by this, but still, like, what I said was mean, and I sh probably shouldn't yeah. have said it. Then you should still apologize, even if you're thinking like, oh, they're freaking out. It wasn't that big of a deal. Like, yeah, but if what you still said was mean, <laughs> then you should probably still apologize. <laughs> yeah, no, I because it is never my it is I try to approach every situation with the intention not to hurt somebody. Like, yeah. I don't actively want to hurt people unless I'm in a really specific mood. Um, <laughs> <laughs> which when, I recommend. When the villain comes out. <laughs> Listen, I'm really upset that I didn't get queer-coded villain on that on that thing. I need to prove that I'm still the villain of the I was day. rooting for you. I really, really was. Anyway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think that that is... Um, so anyone who, who feels hurt or affected by my actions in a negative way deserves an apology. I do agree. Apologies shouldn't be public. Mm -hmm. um, they, they shouldn't necessarily be something that is like over, it shouldn't, because then it doesn't feel real, right? Yeah, then it doesn't. It also, it also takes away from that person who got the apology. Like if I'm publicly apo apologizing to you, but I wasn't in your DMs apologizing, then what that shows is that my apology to you is the same, carries the same weight as my apology to everybody else, which mm -hmm. it shouldn't because you're the person who's wronged, not everybody else. Yeah. Um, and if I did come to you and apologize in your DMs or whatever, and then, and then a publicly apologized, it almost makes it feel less genuine. Yeah. And, and I don't know. It's just, it, it doesn't it doesn't work in the same way if you have like a public faux pas and, and you do a public apology to me it almost it, it's hard for it to not feel like a pr move it's really really hard to pull that yeah. off and make it feel genuine i'm not saying people can't do it some people are real good and they still somehow make it seem genuine but most of the time it just ends up looking like pr and now, yeah oh. hmm. now i feel like there are situations where you might have hurt the whole group i am thinking of one in particular 
where um, most of our most of our players are American, um, but we have a few players who are not. And we in the United States were going through some sort of terrorist and trying to be as vague as possible. There was an yeah. issue here in the United States. It was it was it yeah. was one of our gajillion shootings. Um, we can just say yes. that like that's close <laughs> yes. enough. No, it was a very it was a very tough shooting. It was very personal for a lot of people in the RP. Um, we were talking about it in the salt chat, in the appropriate chat. And the person who didn't understand what was happening or the seriousness of it was coming in and, and making comments that were coming across very rude um, and very like upsetting. Um, and and then in th in terms like that, where you have hurt a majority of the RP or or feelings were hurt, this person was not like punished or prompt or anything like that. It was just more of like a oh, you've hurt a lot of people's feelings. I do think in that term because it is the majority of the RP or it was done in a public setting, a public RP or a public apology would be okay. Yeah. I mean, there are definitely situations. It's it, it, all of this is situational, right? Cause you have to, whatever you do um, to atone for the mistake that you made has to be proportional to the mistake, you know? Yeah. So um, there are definitely situations where I'm, where like what I'm saying is not going to vibe and it's not going to be exactly right. But, yeah. Um, but yeah, in general, you know, in general, so yeah, yeah, I kind of agree. Like that situation, probably a public sorry would have made sense because there was a lot of people in that conversation. <laughs> and it didn't necessarily have to be like, and it doesn't have to be a huge length of text of I'm so sorry that I've hurt. Like it, it, but I do think that because of, it was a public thing and no one necessarily was hurt independently mm -hmm. and it was the subject at, ta at the time too, that sitting there and saying, hey, I'm so sorry I overstepped. I didn't mean for it to come across this way to the full RP makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Because I, I think it would have been even weirder if they had individually apologized to every single person. Right, because that's not the context of the original conversation. Exactly. Um, so it just would have been, it just would have been interesting. So it is kind of a read the room moment, but just yeah. make sure that you are apologizing to the people who have been affected by the, excuse me, who have been affected by the situation. And you're apologizing in a way that is dignified to how the situation happened. So publicly apologizing publicly because it affects other people. Um, not like if it happened in the DMs or it's one specific person going right to them. Um, if the mod sh if the mods had to do a lot of work, then sometimes acknowledging that is good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it just depends. Like it depends. Um, you know, but just it may just. The point is, is it needs to be proportional. And a lot of times that means like you got to go into people's DMs. Like one public apology isn't going to cut it for a lot of situations. If it's not a public situation, then that's not going to make any sense. Yeah, especially also if it's like, if the chat is moving fast. Yeah. <laughs> like, be like, I'm so sorry. And the chat is moving fast before that person logs on. They might never see that apology. Yeah. Like, so, so listen. Unless someone has asked you to get out of their DMs, going into their D DMs is never going to really harm anything unless it's, yeah, it's not, it's not really going to harm anything. Yeah, it's not. I mean, the worst, the worst can, that can happen is they don't answer. Me. <laughs> but we'll talk about that in a, in a little bit. <laughs> yeah. uh, I also think the important part of, understand, of, of an apology and apologizing is understand that the point of apology, apologizing is not to make you feel better or to erase the issue at hand. So if you're approaching mm -hmm. an apology with, oh my God, I feel so bad, I should apologize. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, you're not apologizing for their actions, you're apologizing to ease your own guilt. Yeah. Um, and that doesn't work. Like it doesn't, that doesn't do what you think it's gonna do. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't, yeah, it's just kind of a crappy way to handle social situations. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> it's again, it's part of that not acceptance, right? Is that yeah. you're apologizing to make yourself feel better? I genuinely don't think that you've accepted that you've done something wrong here. No, um, because you're just trying to assuage your own guilt. You're not really like trying to actually own it. Exactly. You don't realize that the other party is hurt, right? You're not mm -hmm. trying to. You're not trying to undo their hurt. You're trying to undo your own, yeah. uh, which means that you have not recognized or accepted the fact that they are hurt. Yeah. Um, or affected by the situation. And then also to erase the issue at hand, so many of us have been taught that like a situation can't be finished until there's an apology that happens. 
Um, at least that's mm-hmm. how I kind of grew up where it was like, you had to say sorry if you did something wrong. So sorry kind of became an end of conversation. Like just became an end of like, sorry, like just let's get this over with. Yeah. And, if you're and that's not really apology, what we're trying to say either. Absolutely. If you're approaching an apology in that direction, that is not an apology that is trying to just sweep it under the rug. Yeah. The apology is the beginning of the conversation. It's like, it's the, it's the, Hey, how are you to the, I have fucked up conversation. You know, Absolutely. that's, that's what it is. And it's, I mean, it takes a lot more ownership, right? It's, it's, mm-hmm. it's a lot more personal um, than just saying, I'm sorry, let's move on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm sorry. Yeah. I mean, in the, in the, like you were saying, it's the hi, hello, how are you doing of the conversation? It's the beginning of a sentence. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm sorry that I did blank, 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 which resulted in blank, blank, blank. Yeah. Or like, I'm sorry I said that thing. I should not have said that. Or, you know, whatever the situation is. Yeah. Right. Sorry is not a valid, is not a valid sentence in my mind. No, it needs to be a little bit more. <laughs> um, unless, unless you're like, unless because of how English language works, unless you're apologizing for a situation that you are not responsible for. So, well, hey, yeah, I'm, then having you can just say sorry. I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> is an okay sentence um or i'm sorry like that's an okay sentence just because of how language uses and i wanted to just clarify that that, that is a different thing because I'm sure yeah oh yeah some people would be like but that what about this and it's like well it's not really your fault <laughs> yeah well it's we're saying sorry any sorry's for mistakes is really what we're talking about yes. yeah just needed to make the clarification <laughs> yes 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 <laughs> do we want to get into that juicy topic as far as um when you shouldn't apologize when you shouldn't apologize yeah okay so this might be this might be a little bit of a spicy take for um for those of you that grew up in those in those uh you know middle uh middle class um white american homes (laughs) uh there are actually times Uh, sorry go ahead (laughs) call your girl out it's fine i get it (laughs) there are actually times where apologizing is the wrong thing to do what Um, amazing Oh my God. <laughs> um, so I'm going to give a kind of extreme example so that you guys can kind of understand what I'm talking about. And then we can, um, you know, discuss it in, in like more specific RP terms. So, okay. If you have like, we'll go back to the abuse episode from last week. If you have actually like abused someone and like hurt them to the point that they have like trauma from the situation, Going to them to apologize and talking about the instance and having them relive that might actually do more damage and you should just cut ties with that person. That's a very extreme example, but just to set y'all up, that's, that's one of the things that I'm talking about. There are situations where going to the person and saying, sorry, will actually make it worse. So it's hard for me to say, which exact situations and when and all that stuff but if you think opening up a conversation with that person is going to make them feel worse or going to make their situation worse then you probably shouldn't apologize because remember the apology is the beginning of a conversation so you should be asking yourself when you're going to apologize to someone is should i even really be talking to this person if the answer is no then maybe in that situation like you actually shouldn't apologize I hope that makes sense. Like, Landon, do you think I explained that good? Like, does that part make sense? Yeah, I example? definitely do explain that good. And I think, um, I think it's hard for people who are, who have had abusive behavior towards other people to recognize those situations. And I think that that's part of the problem. Um, so I think that ties into one of my other points is that if you're expecting to get something out of the conversation, It is not the right time to apologize. So, like, if it's, like, you're expecting uh, someone to talk to you or or something to result, like, a result of the apology to to result in something that is different before the apology, uh, then it might not be the right time to apologize, if that makes sense. Especially in those abuse situations. Like, if you're sitting there and being, like, oh, this person cut me off, so if I apologize, they'll start talking to me again. If that is your motivation for the apology, then you shouldn't be approaching that person for an apology. Right? Like, it's not... (laughs) If you have some kind of, like, goal other than just, like, 
trying to help the person through whatever you did that hurt them, like, it's probably not a good idea, right? Like, if you're like, I miss this person, we used to play Animal Crossing together, and I'm sad because I don't do that anymore, I'm gonna go apologize to them so we can play Animal Crossing again, like, if you play, if they play Animal Crossing with you again, then that's a lovely bonus, but if that's your goal, then, like, I don't know, I think humans are very empathetic and intuitive creatures. I think they're gonna figure out that you have some kind of, like, goal other than just apologizing, <laughs> you know? And it's just gonna be awkward and weird, and it's not gonna work, you know? It's not gonna work. And you're ultimately gonna be disappointed if it turns out that they don't ever want to talk to you again, and they don't care about Animal Crossing anymore, you know? Like, uh, yeah, to kind of, like, give an example of that, I hope that that kind of helps um you know people understand what we're talking about there yeah it's a it's a tough thing because i think that that's like part of the abuse um cycle is that you that the abuser rarely knows that they're doing something wrong um so if you have had that self-awareness of oh my behavior has not been acceptable and it's been abusive then that's amazing take the next step and realize that apologizing won't make that behavior better um, and that maybe, and, and again, like, I think a lot of abusers or people who have been abusive when, especially when they realize that their behavior was abusive, want to apologize to appease their own feelings of guilt. Yeah. Uh, and, and again, it is looking through and asking yourself, will this make the other person feel better? Mm -hmm. Or am I just trying to avoid the, my feelings of responsibility? Yeah. Um, yep. And that's, that's a hard lesson. That's a hard, and it's a hard line. It's a hard lesson. And so I have not met a lot of people who are good at it. Yeah. Well, because I think, like, the only part of the reason is the only way to really be good at that is to have screwed it up before and have, and have done one of those yeah. apologies that you shouldn't have done. And, um, and, and I hope that, you know, it's rare that you're ever in that situation where, where you feel compelled to do that in the first place. So, you know, it's tough, like it's really tough, but I think getting an outside perspective can be helpful. Like if you're, if you're wanting to apologize to somebody that you haven't spoken to in a long time in particular, um, I think talking to, to a third party, like a friend or something like that, that knows a bit about the situation and asking them like, Hey, do you think I should like talk to them again? Do you think I should apologize? You know, that can be helpful to get some outside perspective. Um, cause they might be able to tell you like, well, I don't think that person actually wants to talk to you ever. <laughs> so maybe not. <laughs> uh, um, only, and I, think, I, I don't think, unfortunately, I think that that's something that as a society, we're really bad at telling your friends not to do where I, I think so too <laughs> I think that I, a lot of the times we'll just sit there and be like yeah sure like or just not want to be the person to rain on our friends parade especially if we really care about our friends mm -hmm. and we see that they're treating other people crappy um yeah. but that's a whole other subject <laughs> yeah I mean that's complicated that's complicated it's you know that's so that's about you gotta that's about also about choosing good friends you know about choosing which friend to go to yeah. for advice and things like that <laughs> <laughs> and being self-aware and being able to be in a place of being self-aware and having friends who are equally self-aware and it's really mm -hmm. really hard stuff guys <laughs> yes yeah, it's tough it's tough um, um so i have i have a much lighter i have a much lighter though when you shouldn't oh. apologize that um i think would be that's nice um yeah. when you don't actually feel sorry what oh what my god mean? So, so this is, this is what I was saying beforehand, um, you know, about my whole, like, I'm a bit jaded against, uh, you know, poor or, um, apologies where people don't mean it. Cause at this point I've been watching YouTube since YouTube started. And so I've seen a gajillion insincere apologies. Like if you don't actually feel sorry, if you don't think what you did warrants an apology, if you don't think what you did was wrong, like, don't, don't go to somebody and be like, I'm so sorry your feelings got hurt. Be like, I'm oh, so God. sorry I hurt your feelings, right? If you're, if the way you really feel is that first sentence and not that second sentence, like, just, it's just don't. Like, you are doing more damage than good. Just don't. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, no, you are, it's, again, it's again that, like, training that we have to sit there and be like, sorry will make it better or sorry will make it move on or i'm sorry will change the subject or i'm sorry will appease me of my guilt mm -hmm. um and if any of that is your motivation then you are not actually sorry 
Yeah. Um, you are not actually sitting, you are not thinking with the other person in mind. Uh, your thoughts are not on this, oh my God, I hurt this person's feelings and they are upset by something that I've done. Your feelings are, I don't like the situation or the consequences of my actions and I want to make them better. Uh, and that's not an apology. Nope. An apology isn't a tool for making your life better. An apology should be a tool of, of really trying to help another person through something. Yeah, it's, it's you know, it's, it's repairing the relationship with that person because they're important to you or you want them to feel better or, you know, you think it will help their healing or whatever. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's, and it's, it's, again, it's learning that. It's going through the experiences of recognizing, oh, shit, I'm not apologizing for the right reasons. Yeah. Uh, and you don't really have that awakening until it's really kind of slapped in your face. Yeah, and I, it, this is another one where I, I just like the other, like when you shouldn't apologize. I don't think most people realize it until they've done some of those apologies where they weren't really sorry and they saw that like the results were not good, you know, and then it's like, oh, maybe I shouldn't apologize if I'm not actually sorry. What? But how do you know until you've done some of those? <laughs> exactly, yes. Yeah. So it's tough. So I have a question then for for you, um, Landon, as as somebody uh -oh. that, uh, that that says sorry all the time. What happens when someone doesn't accept your apology? Like you've gone and you've said sorry, you really are sorry, you do accept that that what you did was wrong, and they're like, don't care, still hate you, block. Um, it is no longer in my hands. My responsibility in this apology is to recognize what I've done wrong to accept that I've made a mistake and to apologize in terms of, of like what an apology is, is verbal recognition of that something wrong. Um, if I have done those steps, then it is not up to me to accept. It is not up to me to then like control what happens to that apology, um, mm -hmm. which sometimes sucks because sometimes you're like, oh God, I'm really sorry. And someone could be like, I'm not in a place to hear that. Or I don't accept it at this point in time. And that's that's not on me at that point in time. I don't get to force how another person feels about the situation. I just have to move on and accept it. Um, which is not which is which is a humbling humbling act because sometimes there are situations where you're like that you can't help that defensiveness that comes into play that sits there and goes, All right. I just worked really hard on having this realization and you can't even be bothered. Okay, I get it. It's fine. <laughs> it hurts, um, right? It does hurt. Because a lot of times you does. put a lot of work in into that apology and into those thoughts and all of those things. And it's like somebody, you you do the apology and then they just shit on it. Um, it it does. It, it hurts. And that's, and that's okay for it to hurt. Uh, but you have to recognize that like... Just because you've made a mistake doesn't A, mean that you're... Like, just because someone doesn't accept your apology doesn't mean, A, you're less worthy, B, that you're not doing the correct thing, or C, that you are going to be beheld into your mistakes forever. Especially, like, okay, cool, if this is one person doesn't accept my apology, that's fine. They don't have to accept my apology. Um, if they're not in a place to do that, that's on them. They get to do the work now. I have handed this gift over. It is now on them to do it. Uh, sometimes it feels nice to receive the gift of forgiveness back or to receive recognition of your hard work, but sometimes you don't get that. Yeah, uh, sometimes it doesn't work out that way. And it's, this, this line is a little contradictory to what we've been saying, but even though an apology isn't for you, it also isn't for them. Like the goal of the apology is not their forgiveness. The goal, I think, of the apology is the acknowledgement that some someone was hurt. Mm -hmm. um, at least in my mind, that's what an apology is. Yeah, I don't uh, think that, that just because someone apologizes you means you have to forgive them. You can ex you can Absolutely accept not. an apology without actually forgiving them. You can say like, "Well, I yeah. accept your apology, um, but uh, but what you did was too much, and and you know we're done." Like, and that's yep. still accepting the apology. Absolutely. Um, or. Um, yeah, I think that I, 
I think it's a really odd idea at not accepting someone's apology. Um, like in general, I think that that's something that like, that there is a difference between forgiveness and accepting an apology. Um, because an apology is kind of something that's like thrown at you and it's really hard to not accept something that's thrown at your face. Um, <laughs> it's going to, it's going to hit you whether you catch it or not. Like That's true. <laughs> like this apology is happening whether you like it or not. Like <laughs> Which I, I know sounds weird, but like, yeah, again, it is the it is the purpose of recognizing that you've done something that hurt somebody else and affected something else and taking responsibility of that. That is what yeah. an apology is. Whether they want or need something else beyond that is totally up to them to either process, communicate, and figure out. Yep. So. Yep, pretty much. So, yeah. Um, they don't have to they don't have to accept their your apology hopefully they do um hopefully they both accept your apology and grant you forgiveness but they might not yeah which is totally okay remember that yeah. your self-worth and your self-being is not lessened because someone doesn't accept their your apology yeah um the goal of an apology is to acknowledge hurt feelings yep and, and sometimes it, the reality it, is like just just people just don't get along like sometimes that's just that's yeah. just the reality of it <laughs> and and that's what the result ends up being you know you and this other person just just aren't gonna get along yes um lunar says personally you can't make someone accept your apology then i go play taylor swift music and help me feel better <laughs> yeah i mean i i feel that um like it's weird. It's a weird, stunted, like, process when someone doesn't accept something. Um, sometimes it feels very jarring and to sit there and be like, okay, it's, it's kind of, it just is kind of very, like, this is not how social norms have taught me this conversation goes, but okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> but then again, like, sometimes you don't get to have conversations that involve, like, closure or things like that as well that, that are jarring as well and that's part of just interpersonal communication mm -hmm. um it's not up to you to carry that conversation uh a, an apology conversation and a and finding forgiveness and that kind of conversation is a two-way street and yep. you've done your work to get there someone else has to do theirs yeah. or not it might never happen yep for sure um, okay so hi. once you've apologized Oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, no. So, Ty has a question that I wanted to acknowledge, too. Okay. Follow-up question. What if you ask what you did so you can apologize properly and they go, well, you know what you did or similar? Uh, you, uh, that goes back to what we were saying before. <laughs> like, that's the conversation's yeah. over. They don't want to have it with you. Like, they don't want to have it with you. I mean, I would just say, like, I, I just wouldn't respond to that. Like, I'm going to be perfectly honest. Um, I'm a busy person and I ain't got time for all that you know <laughs> hey yeah, Katie, I mean, welcome you oh and sassy. hey jed i forgot to say hi to you <clears throat> <laughs> you could be sassy and be like i i don't which is why i reached out um but also i think karen karen's way is sitting there and just not responding because at that point they want attention they don't want an apology or yeah like even or something they want to hurt you the way that you hurt them maybe and that won't approach a conversation in the same way yeah, I mean, when someone says, like, you know what you did, and I, I legit don't, you know, that's just, I'm I'm just done, you know? <laughs> Actually, not Mind Raider, but okay, good to know. Yeah, like, cool. I don't know, I don't, yeah, I don't, I just don't respond when I see things like that, personally. Yeah. I mean, that is what it is. All right, <sighs> what's our next step? Next step is face your consequences. So in this scenario, you have apologized. They have either accepted or not accepted your apology. They've either forgiven you or not forgiven you. Um, whichever way it is, um, the next thing that you have to do is if there are any consequences for what you did, you got to face them. So what does that look like? <laughs> um, Sometimes that... Okay, so this is... This, I think, is works more on a one-on-one -on -one level. Um, sometimes after something like this happens, conflict or an apology is necessary or someone's made a mistake, there is this awkward time after that forgiveness or acceptance conversation that just feels tense and feels a little cold and feels like you're walking on eggshells sometimes. Uh, and you just have to get past that. You just have to kind of pretend it doesn't exist. 
because uh, like that's the interpersonal emotional part of it uh, for those like for those like mistakes that you've made on friendship levels on writing partner levels like that could be part of the consequences of realizing that there's been a shift in the dynamic and you just have to wait to see where that shift goes mm -hmm. uh, that might be a consequence that you have at hand yeah, that's um, definitely one that could happen. And I think that happens pretty often. Like, even if the person forgives you, like, it just, it takes time to get the relationship back to how it was before. Absolutely. And it might not be back to where it was before. I mean, I also, I think that, like, a big, a big, like, important part of a relationship, um, writing, interpersonal, like, friendship, anything like that, is when you've had that first disagreement. Yeah. When someone has made a mistake that has hurt you because it happens no matter what, somebody is going to hurt you on accident, they're gonna say the wrong thing or something like that. Uh, and part of that developing that relationship is figuring out how you handle that. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that that is an important time that you just, that it happens in every relationship. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> That Absolutely. you sit there and go, okay, cool. How do we handle this? What do we do? This shifts the dynamic, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. Could be for mm -hmm. the best. Yep. Now, if it's something that's like in a in a group, then the consequences are probably a little bit more clear. Um, maybe you might get like issued a warning or a strike. Maybe there's like a particular person in the role play that you're just you're just not going to role play with them anymore um, because y'all just had too much going on. Maybe. Um, you know you get you get told like that you have to follow this certain rule or or like it's not going to work out anymore maybe you've actually done something really horrible and you get kicked out or banned whatever it is like you have to face that whatever the consequences based on the relationship based on the the rules um you you have to face that yep yep Face the light. <laughs> yep. Jed, I don't have anything um, small and cute right now, but I will keep that in the queue for you. And um, and when we when we move to that last garden that we're gonna do, I'll name a pinata, um, or honest the destroyer. So soon, it might take a couple streams, but we'll do it. <laughs> so yeah, um, whatever the consequences are, and it's gonna vary a lot. But whatever those consequences are, you have to face them. You have to, you know, you have to take it. Yeah, and I think that this is the important reminder of a, of a conversation we had last week about the difference between consequences and punishment. Yeah. Consequences are, are um, natural effects from something that has happened. Those consequences could be good, they can be bad, they could be neutral. Punishment is when someone is actively holding something against you and trying to get a re like trying to get some emotional reciprocity out of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the big um, difference is that consequences are proportional to what you did, yes. and punishment is not. <laughs> you know, consequences are like, are like, you know, you stole something, and now you have to go pay for for that thing that you stole, or and some a little bit on top of it for the time, right? Like that's that's a that's a um, that's a consequence. Um, I you stole something, and someone shoots you in the face. That's punishment. Right? Like, that's the difference. It's proportionality. Yes. So you need to... You need to be able to face the consequences and not... Ex like, you're not being punished. There shouldn't be any punishment in these moments. Yeah. And if you are feeling like you're being punished, then you need to know that the conversation is not resolved. And you need to make a decision after after that point. Yeah. Um, because and it's not our abuse episode has some good stuff if you're if that's your situation. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Yes. No, I was going to say, and it's it's not fair that you're being punished because because this is whole thing is not about ways that you can make up for it. This is about ways that you can solve the problem and move on. Like we're mm -hmm. not talking about that you deserve consequences for your actions or you deserve punishments for your actions that you have to make up something because you hurt someone. The apology in itself should like. Be a, a, the apology and conversation in itself should be a part of that making up for it. Mm -hmm. You don't deserve punishment afterwards. Yeah. Yep. So um, whatever the consequences are, you have to face them. If you feel like you're being punished, um, go watch our abuse episode because we expand on that a lot, a lot better. 
and know and that you just, don't this is like this punished. is role play this is like it's a little stupid niche hobby on the internet like people shouldn't be punishing you over transgressions that you made in role play like that's so silly <laughs> and again punishment i mean not talking to someone giving someone the silent treatment being hurt as far as like using only two or three words all of these could be like punishment sort of thing so like don't also undermine that if you've apologized and you felt that you came to a conclusion and someone is still being unreasonable in their in their um actions towards you that that also is like don't feel like you're trying to gaslight yourself out of that that's still valid that you yeah. feel like someone isn't accepting and moving on yeah I mean, they might not be able to. They might have told you they accepted your apology and they just didn't, you know? I mean, yeah. that, that happens. That Sometimes point, we're mistaken. Sometimes we're mistaken about how we feel and we're, you know, a little too ambitious thinking that we're going to get over it and we don't, <laughs> you know? Yep. And that's the <laughs> you get to make. That's something that is that rests on you that you sit there and you go, do I accept this behavior or not? Mm -hmm. um, yep. I think also another part of consequences is that you might isolate yourself and make other people uncomfortable. This is tends to happen more in a group RP or a group dynamic. Um, that that other people might um, hear through the grapevine things that happened, or might know parts of the story, or might have an opinion on the story that has nothing to do with them. Um, and you might feel isolated and uh, and made uncomfortable by other people. Um, and a part of that is accepting that you've made it right by the person who has been hurt, that the person who deserves the apology got the apology, and you just have to move on. Um, again, keeping in mind the difference between consequences and punishment. Consequences could be the unstable social dynamic. Punishment is going to be if people continue to use it against you. Yeah, people are like, well, you know, you did this thing, you apologize for it, um, and uh, and we've you've been told that it's that it's fine and we should move on, but we've decided that we're gonna cold shoulder you now out of the out of the whole game. Like that's yeah. not right. That's not right. Yep. Nope. So um, um, I know we have a question here that says when are consequences too far, but I think we basically touched on that. When it when it yeah, when it gets disproportionate, when it moves into the realm of punishment, then they're not consequences anymore. They're not. Nope, they are not. <laughs> Um, so the last step, the last thing that you have to do, so we've, we've, uh, accepted, we've apologized, we've faced the consequences and that last step is to do better next time. Yep. Um, it is not a recovering from a mistake without that goal in mind, in my opinion, I agree. because if you're not willing to do better or not actively trying to do better, and I'm not saying you're never going to make the mistake again, I'm saying actively just trying to do better. Uh, you're just continuing to repeat a pattern. Mm -hmm. What were you going to say, Karen? Yeah, no, that's exactly that. Like, if you make a mistake, the whole point, once you've realized that you've made a mistake, is to try to not do that again. <laughs> So you need to learn from it. And that means that that can mean a lot of different things. Okay, so I'll give some examples. That could mean, um, you know, just straight up, just don't do that thing again. Like maybe it's as simple as that you open mouth, insert foot, and you just need to like, think before you speak and just not, <laughs> you know, or it could be something like, you know, I realize that whenever I'm in this situation, or I interact with this type of person, or I'm writing this type of plot, that I start to get these feelings and thoughts and expectations and it it triggers me to do this bad thing, right? Um, so maybe you need to change your environment so that you're, you know, not uh, pushed in that direction anymore, right? Uh, maybe it's a situation where uh, you need to change like the pattern of thought that you're having about a situation. You know, like I, I can't handle it when people do this perfectly normal behavior and I lash out at them but that behavior is actually perfectly normal and you just need to suck it up. You know, it, it, it depends, right? Like it depends on what the situation is, but the whole goal is to learn from those mistakes, right? Like you should be assessing the situation and being like, what can I do to make sure this doesn't happen again? Or that it's easier next time for me to not do the bad thing when the stimulus comes up again to do the bad thing, right? That's the whole goal. Yep. 
And again, not saying that you'll never make this mistake again. Say you hurt somebody's feelings because you jumped to a conclusion. You might continue to jump to conclusions, but it's putting those, it's putting those stop gaps. It's sitting there and being like, you know what? I'm going to take a five minute break before I jump down somebody's throat or mm-hmm. 10 minute break. I'm going to leave it alone for a day. I'm going to sit on it for a week um, and and not like hold them against it for a week, but see if I still feel the same thing in a week. Yeah. Um, those, sorts of, those sorts of behavior and taking that responsibility to change the action, even if it's a little bit at a time. Um, mm-hmm. That is what you can do to make it be better, to do better. Yep. Um, this is where, recognize- this is where like, I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. Um, This is where, you know, making good choices and who your friends are can be really important Um, because sometimes you're really mad and I know it works for me a lot of times is to dive into someone's DMs and be like, can you believe this bullshit? Oh my God. You know, and then I get it out my system and I don't care anymore. Um, That doesn't work for everybody. Some people that just amps them up and makes them go do the bad thing. But (laughs) um, for a lot of people, just getting a friend's perspective is super helpful, right? So that's where you can cut up in the DMs and uh, and the other person can be like, oh, my God, yeah, that sucks. Uh, you know, and then you're over it and you're good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or, um, yeah, that's the perfect example of sitting there and, and, and turning to your friends. Also, having good friends and good relationships will also hold you accountable. Like, yeah. if sitting there and saying, hey, I really, I made this, I make this mistake, I get super... I start getting super jealous over a certain di- a certain dynamic. If I have a certain dynamic with a shipping partner, I start get, getting super jealous uh, when they're shipping other people um, yeah. or something. Who knows? That sitting there and being like, okay, well, your friends can also help you hold accountable and sit there and be like, well, it's sounding like you're starting to get really jealous. Yeah. Um, and it's like, <laughs> oh, I should probably change that. Yeah. Like if you're like, I, I hate this other ship, da 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 And, you know, if, if they're good friends and they know you well, they should be able to be like, do you really? Or do you just hate that it means you're not getting as much attention from this person, <laughs> you know, or like something that. like that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, and they'll say it kinder and, and whatever repertoire you guys have, but having that community around you will do that and asking people to do that for you. Obviously mm-hmm. not making it their responsibility, but sitting there and being like, hey, if you ever notice that I start like, really harping on one person can you call me out on it yeah or, like tell me whatever. to chill the fuck out god yeah tell me to, <laughs> tell me not to like i've done this with you tell me not to do the thing because i yeah. will do the thing if Karen tells me. <laughs> yeah, so, so then i like, can be like no landon there's no point in that you you don't really want to do that <laughs> and nine times out of ten i will listen sometimes i don't but most of the time i do <laughs> <laughs> um and that's that's ways you can really stop gap but really the goal is doing better yeah. um growth is is what we want to achieve in situations like this like and that's what we want to achieve in everything we want to continue to grow and be better than how we than what we were yeah. uh and knowing that you've made a mistake is just an opportunity for that expansion mm-hmm. if you don't want to grow in any in like certain directions that's okay like you can just like bounce so if there's a way that you're like hey i don't actually like the direction that i'm growing in or i don't necessarily want to change this thing and someone is really sensitive over this particular thing and i'm going to continue to hurt them because it's a behavior that i don't see as a mistake um and but i don't want to hurt them then sometimes just ending the shit or ending the relationship or ending anything like that might be what's best and might mm-hmm. also be a form of growth yeah yeah, it's going to depend. But at this at this point, you know, you have accepted that you made a mistake. You apologized. Yep. You faced the consequences. So you should have a lot of data and information on whatever the situation is and be able to kind of like make that assessment of, OK, what does growth look like for me in this situation? And what do I need to do to prevent this from happening in the future? Exactly. Like you should know that. And the goal is not you know, to, to be perfect, right? Like this doesn't mean like you made a mistake once and you're never allowed to make this type of mistake again. Like you are, but the point is growth. So you should be trying to not make the same mistake again, right? Like you should be, you should be attempting to, to grow in this regard. Um, 
growth isn't always linear. Like that's that's a thing. You know, sometimes we we backslide, but we're we're trying our best not to. We're trying our best not to make the same mistake over and over and over. It's all about growing and trying our best and and owning up to the responsibility that we have in this world. Yep. And that's being kind to other people. Absolutely. And I think that takes us to a good point. Yeah, I think so too. Or notes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, let me save the game. And do you have some good news for us today, Landa? Um, you mean other than my good news? Yeah. No, yeah, I, I mean we had we had pretty good news during favorite things this morning. But <laughs> hey, you you had good news too. I know. I'm so excited. I'm so I'm so glad um, that uh, that I'm like I got my shot. Like uh, it's you know. The end is on the horizon, right? The end is on the horizon. All right. There is a link in the doobly-doo. <laughs> is it okay to call Twitch chat doobly-doo? Is that, is that a thing we like can there. do? I'm doing it. If it's not allowed, then I don't care. Well, it is now. <laughs> so there we go. Okay. So, woman collecting shellfish discovers dinosaur footprint of Jurassic giant. What? Oh, Isn't wow. that cool? That's so, so cool. This happened, yeah, this happened in Yorkshire, which is in England. And she was uh, just, like, collecting shellfish on the coast and discovered this uh, megalosaurus footprint. Um, she stumbled across, like, the footprint... And it must have been wa washed away, like the debris must have been washed away by some rains or something like that. Uh, and she was able to, she was able to see this. And that, isn't that so cool? Yeah, that is really, <laughs> really cool. And it's like, it really looks like it too. Like this is unmistakable. Yeah, it absolutely no, and, looks and like a footprint. Other, and scientists, scientists have like checked it out, and it is, it is like real. <laughs> um, and um, some. Um, it's the this is the largest thyropod footprint ever found in Yorkshire, uh, made by a large meat-eating dinosaur. So a large carnivore left it. So, um, and it's the largest one that they've ever seen in in Yorkshire, at the very least. Oh, cool. So it says um, it's going to go on public display at the Rotunda Museum in Scarborough. So if you're near Scarborough, um, you can go see this lady's footprint she found on the beach. Yeah, isn't that so cool? Yeah, this is like that. This is like um, you know, the thing that you always that you kind of like dream of as a kid, like oh, you know, that you're gonna find a fossil or a footprint or something like that. Uh, this is really really neat. And um, turns out that they did. Yeah, so I guess I mean I guess this still this still happens. <laughs> yeah, and I mean I, I think that that just goes to show that there's so much left of this world that we've not yet discovered. Um, and like that's just something really cool to think about that in your backyard when you're hunting for shellfish or like scourging for dinner or just going for a walk you could discover something really truly miraculous oh um, ty says she's been there oh that's so cool oh, ty that's awesome. is well, it good is it a nice go museum back. sorry go ahead landon <laughs> no i said if you ever go back now you know yeah yeah is it a nice museum though like is it cool i've, I've never been to the uk or any of that area so i don't really know i don't really know anything about it um, but, uh, but that's so neat. This is so neat. Um, you know, someday, someday I would, oh, it's very cool. It's dinosaur based mostly. Oh, it's definitely cool then. Um, dinosaur museums are the best. <laughs> I love dinosaur museums. Yeah. The only, they're so neat. I, so here are the, here, I know that this is completely off topic, but I feel that's very, okay. very Here are the ranked museums. Ready? Yes, uh, I'm ready. Aquarium. Okay. <laughs> Um, any sort of, uh, especially the Denver Science Museum is number two. So any aquarium in the world, it doesn't matter how dinky it is, is above any science museum. Okay. Denver Science Museum. Uh, and then dinosaur museums. And then uh, we have a, cryptozo a cryptozoology museum here in Maine. And those are my top four uh, museums. <laughs> cryptozoology <laughs> museum. That cryptozoology. sounds so cool. <laughs> it is pretty wild. So, um, yes. Oh, York has a Viking museum. I'll have to go there. <laughs> oh, oh, that sounds so cool, Ty. Yeah, Katie. Um, just redeem the cupcake and let me know what you want your phrase to be. We'll actually get that set up right now for you. So go ahead and tell me what you want and do the. Yeah, she's at the ten k. Yes. So we will I'm do so that. Close. I'm at 
So when you do your second one, do you know, you're gonna have to pick what you want the exclamation to be because there's already like an oh, exclamation yeah. land in. Oh yeah. No, I'm, I'm waiting for it. Don't worry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Katie, I'm getting the thing open so we can do this for you. Let's see. Oh, I'm disturbed, excited, heart sick and here for it. Okay. I like it. This is awesome. Here we go. I'm going to set this up right now. I love that so much, Katie. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good one. I feel like it's a good companion um, to your one, Landon. Oh, now I'm just going to do, I'm going to do both of them right after each other. That's how it has to be. I like it. Okay. All right. So let's see. Okay. You're there on the secret. So... Here we go. Boom. Everybody give an exclamation, Katie. <laughs> All right. I also need to go into Twitch and reward the prediction. I gotta remember how to do that. But yeah, so that is the wonderful, wonderful news of the week. Okay, the yes is one. We did get Rorio. We actually finished Rorio. Um, next stream, we'll try to get an Elephanilla, and then we'll be going back to the getting, trying to get the Dragonosh. We are almost done with you, a Pinata for real, guys. Almost done for real. So we'll do a prediction next time, probably, too. As, uh, are we going to attract an Elephanilla? I know a bunch of them have been coming to the garden, but they never seem to eat enough of the produce to stay. So we'll see. <laughs> Um, all right. So with that being said, let's wrap up. Uh, Landon, where can everybody find you? You can find me at on TikTok at Land in Reverie and Land in Maine. Both of them are puns. Uh, one is tarot. One is just me being silly. Um, <laughs> and then you can also follow me on Twitter. I don't know. Let's go with that this week. Land sure. in Maine. There too. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all um, right. Where you can go ahead. No, I was going to say that's that's basically it. <laughs> All right. So where you can find me, of course, is right here on Twitch. We have two streams that we do. Uh, one is Interstage Window. That is my conversation stream. Uh, Landon's on basically all of them. And sometimes we have guests. And next week, what are we doing next week? You remember, Landon? I, I'm pretty sure it's with Bree. Um, let's it's see. Bree. I'm looking. I got it. Okay. Lana's going to tell us what that is in a second. I'm pretty sure it's Next free. week, it's going to be keeping your RPs fresh and exciting. Yeah. And All right. the week so after that, oh, so that everyone can Oh, we don't know. Off. Yeah, no? we don't know what the week after that is going to be for sure yet. Really? Okay. Yeah, I don't think so. I think it, it's, it's among us. No, it's not. Not necessarily. Okay. Never yeah. mind then. <laughs> um, okay. So... Yeah, it's don't don't list don't look at May. Don't look at May yet. We can talk about that afterwards. All right. So um, where you can find me right here on Twitch, we have two streams. Again, we have the um, the interstage window. And then we have artistic license, which is my Thursday stream at 630. Um, and this is all Eastern times. Uh, next week on Artistic License, so next Thursday, we're actually going to be doing some Sims 2. So because y'all had voted and want to do Sims 2 next after we have Pinata here on Interstage Window, I need to test it out and make sure that it streams well. So <laughs> we're going to be playing uh, Pleasant View, which is one of the neighborhoods that comes with Sims 2. So we're going to be doing that on Thursday. I will show you guys kind of how I set up the neighborhoods and I do a rotational play uh, and we'll do all the scripted events and all that fun stuff. You guys that know Sims 2 know what I'm talking about. If you don't, show up for a good time. It's going to be fun. Um, and then the, I also have my YouTube show, which is Spare Room on Wednesdays at 2 p.m. It's coming back next week. So uh, tune in for that on Wednesday. Yeah. And the main social media that I use is Twitter. So you can find me on Twitter. It's mostly advertisements, but sometimes there's hot takes and stuff. I have a TikTok too, but I haven't posted it in forever. So I removed it from the socials. If y'all want to follow my TikTok, you can, but I, I don't know when I'm going to get back to that. So that is what it is. Um, and now that's all the places that you can find me. I think that's a wild amount of places. <laughs> it is it is okay so here's what we're gonna do for the raid y'all we are gonna raid rival because he is doing a 12 hour stream 
for his stream anniversary and um, Wolves Den anniversary and all of that. He's the guy that runs the, the Wolves Den server that I've told you all about um, on here. So that's who we're going to raid. So let me pop that in so we can get that going. Make sure I spell it right. Okay, there we go. We're going to raid new, new, your new rival in about 10 seconds. Thank you guys so much for coming today. Um, don't forget to make it a great day. And don't forget to be awesome. All right. Bye, guys. Have fun. Bye. He's playing Five Nights at Freddy's. So y'all have a good time with that.